Well, while it's difficult to know exactly when the flu season will start, we know that every year flu causes widespread infection in the community, uh, causes hospitalizations and deaths. So each year we're concerned about what the, how the flu will play out and we look very closely at the viruses that are spreading. So far the early indications are that we'll have viruses that are very similar to last year. We know that there will be three types of viruses, both uh, two types of A virus and one type of B. The early indications are that because there will be similar viruses here this year than last year um, and we'll have a, a vaccine that is better matched to those viruses, that the impact may actually be lesser this year than previous years. To reduce the impact of spread each year, there are four key simple prevention mes messages we'd like to get across. Firstly, get vaccinated. Uh, it's important that particularly people who uh, are at high risk of severe flu complications get vaccinated. And for these people, it's free. These people include uh, all people aged 65 years and over, pregnant women, or Aboriginal people aged 15 years and over, and people over the age of uh, six months with any serious medical condition that makes them at risk of more severe flu. The second important message is to cover your coughs and sneezes. Ideally this is with a tissue and you should bin it straight away. If you don't have a tissue or handkerchief available, coughing into your elbow is better than coughing into your hands. The third message follows that and it's to keep your hands clean. We need to encourage people to wash their hands regularly, ideally with soap and water for at least 15 seconds. If there's no soap and water available, using an alcohol-based hand rub is a good alternative. Fourthly, um, and not leastly, we need to remember that if people with uh, symptoms of flu should stay at home. So people who have symptoms such as fever, cough, runny nose or muscle aches and pains should stay at home. We really want people to avoid spreading the infection on public transport, in schools and in the workplace. The H7N9 bird flu virus um, that's currently um, being reported from China is a subject of intense international surveillance and a subject of concern for all of us. At the moment there have um, been reports from um, China of severe respiratory infection caused by this virus in people, including hospitalizations and deaths. So far, it seems that people are only inquiring the infection in China, and it doesn't appear to have acquired the ability to spread easily from person to person. While this is reassuring to a degree, we know that influenza viruses mutate frequently, and so we're all out on the, on the lookout uh, for signs that this virus may change into a virus that spreads easily between people, uh, which may well cause an influenza pandemic. Because of this, we've issued um, clinicians with advice on how to deal with um, patients who may have this infection. Certainly, it has been observed already that people who've acquired the infection in China have been identified in other countries. So it's possible that someone uh, may acquire their infection in China and come back uh, and be diagnosed in Australia. So we've provided advice to clinicians about how best to manage these people and to make sure that the risk is reduced of them spreading the infection to other people. MERS is a relatively new respiratory virus and it's been identified in the Middle East. Um, it's a relative of the SARS coronavirus, but not the same. But it is, however, an infection that has caused serious illness in people in, in Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates and about four other neighboring countries around that area. We have also seen some um, cases that have acquired the infection in that area in the Middle East um, been identified in other countries so we know that it can be spread um, through travel. Everyone around the world is, is 
concerned about the MERS coronavirus becoming a, a virus that might spread easily from person to person. So far there's no evidence that it's been able to do that, but we do know that there have been outbreaks of infection both within hospitals and uh, within close contacts within families of cases. So everyone is on the alert um, for MERS coronavirus and nationally we put out and within the state put out advice to clinicians on how to identify possible um, patients uh, with the infection and likely in, in travelers returning from the Middle East. And we put out advice for people who are traveling to the Middle East on ways that they might um, help prevent their infection. We do know that the people who are at most risk of severe infection are those people with severe um, respiratory conditions um, and other medical conditions that make them more susceptible to infection. Those people need to take um, particular caution if they're thinking of traveling to the Middle East and we've provided some advice on how they might reduce their risk. In Australia, uh, as I said, clinicians are being advised on how to look for cases and we're taking a very cautious approach to how we might manage a case diagnosed here. Although we think that it is not a virus that can easily be spread from person to person, certainly it has been shown to be able to be spread from person to person and people in, in hospitals and healthcare settings particularly need to be very cautious about how they approach um, possible patients and to make sure that the risk of them spreading the infection to other people is reduced wherever possible. It is also a very active investigation. A lot of new information is coming out uh, regularly. We've had quite a few new cases reported during April and May and the World Health Organization is investigating with local authorities in the Middle East uh, to identify um, what might be the possible ways people acquire this infection and, and how it's spread to other people. So clinicians and everyone in the community needs to be uh, aware that the advice may change and to be uh, keeping up to date with the advice both from the World Health Organization and from the information that, that we provide locally as well.